So welcome back to this afternoon's session. Uh, I'm Danielle Bassett. I'm one of the co-organizers of the conference. Um, and we're going to start with the contributed talks. We're going to have two 15-minute uh, contributed talks, followed by our keynote of the afternoon, which will be from Rebecca Sachs. And then we'll continue after that with a few more contributed talks before the poster session. So we're going to start off with unconscious perception of scenes reveals a perceptual neural signature of um, memorability. So the classical neurophysiological theory holds that perception and memory functions are segregated in the brain. And medial temporal lobe subserves memory, and other brain areas like ventral visual stream have been associated to visual perception. But there are also other studies uh, which challenged this uh, theory and provided evidence that the line between memory and perception is blurry. Here, we also took a step in this direction, and we asked if we can find memory-related signals in perception. To have an idea how we approach this challenge, let's do a demo of the task our subjects performed uh, in our experiments. You will see a series of images presented very fast. Please get ready to clap if you see a face image. Seriously, get ready. Images go by very fast. <laughs> Great, <laughs> you did a good job. Let's do another one. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> and one more. Oh, you are great, yeah. <laughs> there was no face um, in this uh, trial, but if I ask you if you have seen a kitchen or a street with a bus, you would probably not remember it because I directed your attention to the face images. What you saw in the demo was a very fast presentation of 11 images with the speed of 34 milliseconds per picture, and the middle image could be a face or not. And when it was uh, not a face, it was replaced with uh, some specific scene images. This task is uh, called Rapid Serial Visual Presentation of Images, or RSVP. And uh, it has been uh, frequently used in uh, behavioral studies to investigate what level of perceptual understanding can be achieved with very brief presentation of images. So uh, we selected our images uh, from a larger scale image memorability data set, uh, which contains um, all around 60,000 images, each with uh, memorability, uh, each uh, is associated with a memorability score. Uh, and uh, these scores uh, are obtained by running a memory game on Amazon, uh, an online memory game on, on Amazon Torg. And over 1,000 people uh, have participated in this uh, experiment. And uh, we, from this data set, we selected 30 images from high memorability range and 30 from low memorability range and, as our targets, and 150 images um, from mid-level memorability as, our, as the distractors in the RSVP paradigm. Uh, we controlled the low and high memorable images for um, their low-level features, like uh, spatial frequency, color, luminance, and brightness, as well as their uh, semantic, uh, high-level semant categorical semantics. And uh, to test for uh, memory encoding uh, in the RSVP uh, experiment, we uh, asked our subject to do an, an anticipated uh, memory test after the RSVP experiment uh, by uh, presenting them with target images um, randomly mixed with a, seri with, uh, a, matching a matching set of novel images and ask them to report if they have seen these images in, during the RSVP experiment or, um, and uh, to report it with a confidence level from one to four. And here you can see their performance. So as you can see, for face images, where um, we directed uh, the attention of the subjects to them, their performance is significantly above chance with a favor for high uh, memorable images. But for scene images, which subjects were not aware of them, their performance is at chance level, and so there was no memory encoding for them. From now on, we concentrate uh, on this uh, set of images to, um, um, to, for uh, not having any uh, memory confounds. 
So we collected MEG data while our subjects were performing the RSVP task, and to extract information from the MEG data, we use multivariate pattern analysis. So at each time point, we arrange the uh, data from MEG sensors in vectors, and uh, for each target image, we have several trials. So at each time point, for each uh, target image, we have several trials, and we can use them, uh, several vectors, and we can use them to train a SVM classifier to discriminate uh, these uh, target images using MEG data. And uh, we populate a representational dissimilarity matrix um, uh, using the decoding uh, performance of uh, SVM classifier. And each row and column in this matrix corresponds to a target um, image. Uh, intuitively, this, um, we so we have a um, RDM matrix at each time point, and intuitively this uh, shows uh, how well the SVM classifier could uh, decode the, or discriminate the target images. Let's look at the decoding time series for high memorable and low memorable images. Uh, so uh, for uh, high memorable images, the decoding time series is shown in red, and for low memorable images in blue. As you can see, uh, high memorable images show uh, higher decoding uh, and longer, uh, which lasts longer than, mem than low memorable images, and their uh, difference starts around 150 milliseconds after a stimulus onset. This is uh, expected as we control for low level feature. And uh, we further ask if we can find a uh, perceptual trace of uh, like um, memorability in uh, perceptual cortical sources. So uh, we map the MEG data, the sensor data, to some cortical um, areas of interest. Here, for example, early visual cortex. And we did the same analysis uh, on the data in, in EVC. And as you can see, there is no significant difference between decoding time series of um, high and low memorable images in this area. Uh, but when we looked at inferior parietal, which encompasses uh, transfer of occipital sulcus, an area which is important for uh, perception of scenes, we see a significant difference between, um, uh, between high and low memorable images. But uh, as you know, MEG uh, data is coarse in a special resolution, so this motivated us to uh, do a uh, follow-up study, which I collaborated with uh, Caitlin Mullin. And uh, this time, we made a bigger set of uh, stimuli, uh, 78 pair of, uh, pairs of um, high and low memorable images, and we collected uh, MEG and fMRI data. Again, we controlled all the stimuli, uh, stimuli of high and low memorable images for their low level features as well as their uh, high level semantics. And we used a recently developed uh, uh, method, analysis method, uh, which combines the merits of two um, data sets, uh, high resolution, high special resolution of MR MRI data and high temporal resolution of MEG data. This method is uh, developed by uh, Chihi et al. And uh, if I want to intuitively explain it, I can say that um, in a similar way that I explain how we construct these RDM matrices using MEG data, we can run a searchlight on fMRI data, and at each voxel, we can construct these RDM matrices for our stimuli set. So we mapped MEG data to this representational space. We also map the fMRI data to this representational space. And there we can compare these uh, representations by simply taking the correlation of these um, matrices. And this will give us a special temporal map of uh, um, neural dynamics in the brain. OK, let me uh, play. Um, so here you will see. The, uh, these um, special temporal maps for high memorable images and low memorable images. As you would see, they show a um, uh, regular flow from early visual cortex to higher uh, per, uh, perceptual area in uh, ventral stream, and they look pretty similar uh, for high and low memorable images. 
and uh, it's difficult to tell the difference here. Uh, but if we take the difference, let me play it. So this is the difference between high and high memorable images and low memorable images, again showing the significant difference, um, difference uh, correlation maps and uh, plotted on axial uh, MRI uh, images. As you would see, there is nothing significant early on. But around 150 milliseconds, you will see some uh, significant correlations coming up in PHC, LO, fusiform, all uh, higher perceptual uh, brain areas. In case you miss, missed it, let me play it one more time. So nothing before 150 milliseconds. This is expected as we controlled for low level features. Uh, in this uh, stimuli set, and around 150 milliseconds, PHC, LO, fusiform coming up. Okay, to conclude, the RSPP paradigm suppresses memory encoding of visual stimuli. So it is a, an effective uh, paradigm for us to uh, study the pure uh, perceptual neural signature, signature of image memorability. Uh, our uh, results show that memorability signals start around 150 milliseconds after a stimulus onset, and um, uh, these signals can be found in higher perceptual brain areas like TOS, LO, fusiform, and PHC. This is uh, the Cognitive Computational Neuroscience Conference. So if I want to link uh, this uh, cognitive neuroscience uh, study with computational um, um, aspects of it, uh, I can say that knowing the duration and sequencing of cognitive processes, like here uh, predicting memory, may suggest computational constraints and new architectures for AI models. And as a take home message, I can say that the memory fate of a stimulus is decided in perception. Here I would like to uh, thank uh, my collaborators and funding agencies and all of you for uh, attending. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Great, so we have time for two questions. We could do this uh, integration of fMRI and MEG data by comparing these RDM matrices within high memorable images and also within low memorable images and then take the difference of these correlation maps. Did you plot the difference uh, on the brain or how did you explore that difference? Map? Oh, so that was what I showed here. So, uh, we plot the significant like differences here, um, which, which will be a, um, a special temporal uh, correlation, right? We have the RDM matrices at each voxel for fMRI data, and we have it at each time point for MEG data. And with compare, like taking the correlation of this, we will have a, a correlation of uh, like a special temporal correlation of. Uh, um, uh, these like um, um, these maps, like you know, at, we have it at each voxel and time, and then the result will be at each like all voxels and time points. The result of this uh, correlation. So, so in other words, each uh, dot that you show here is a coincidence of the fMRI giving you space and the MEG giving mm -hmm. you time. time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. One more question. How do you know that uh, what we're looking at here is is not um, is actually memorability as opposed to just the features that make them memorable. 
different visual features. It looks like, you know, looking at those two, like, two sets of images, mm -hmm. one was a little bit more, you, you see more objects that are discernible uh, in the memorable ones as opposed to the other. How do you know you're just not mapping the low level brain response just to those features? So that's what we try to control for it. For example, in the simulated set, like some examples that uh, I, I showed here, for example, it's a bathroom scene in both case, or bedroom scene, or like a tree in like a background. And uh, we also controlled for low level features. That's the best we could do, actually. Oh, what's the mix? Okay, that's something that we are trying to understand. So basically, based on these results, it means that for any reason, they have a stronger perceptual um, representation in the, in the brain that makes them more like makes them prepared for being encoded in memory. 